Welcome to a Dory video on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to discuss one of the data structures available in Harlow 3.3, Data Sense. In a previous video, I talked about the data structure array. An array, asks us, array allows us to ask two general questions. At this position, what is the value of an entry, and does the array contain this value? And we saw in the previous video how we can work with different keywords, working with arrays, add to and remove from those arrays. In this video, I'm going to talk about data sets. However, it's useful to talk about data sets in reference to the other data structure I previously covered, arrays. So if you've not previously seen that video, I might suggest you go ahead and watch it just so you understand in context what I'm talking about. So when we understand data sets, we can start to understand why they arrive in Harlow because of their previous existence in the parent language of JavaScript. In JavaScript, there is the concept of a set. A set contains unique values in no particular order. And in fact, the order is so not particular that it cannot be accessed. So we can't know the order of things, but we can know if something is in a set or not in a set, and it has to contain unique values. Carried over into Harlow, we see this same construction. We have data set, which is a collection of values, but we don't know the order of which those values are in, and we don't usually care, but we can know is this value in the set or not. At the same time, we care much more about uniqueness. We need to know is the values that are in the set unique or not. That is, if they are not unique, if we are attempting to add a value that already exists within the set, we will not be allowed to do that. It won't cause an error, it just won't happen. So how do we create data sets? Well, in Harlow, we can use two different macros, similar to, again, working with arrays. When we work with data sets in Harlow, we can either use the DS macro or the data set macro. For the sake of this video, I have used D set or DS across all of these different examples. So how do we create a data set? Well, we use the DS macro. So moving over here to example one, we see I've used the DS macro right here, and I've got a series of values separated by commas. Again, very similar to how we looked at arrays in a previous video. Notice again, recalling that previous video, we need to do something with this once we create it, and so we put it inside of a variable. Again, we think of variables as being buckets we put things in. In this particular case, we are creating the data set right here, three values, and three unique values and putting it to the temporary variable example data set and then we can see it. So if we go ahead and start the story from here, we see A, B, and C. Perfect. Just like arrays so far. So let's continue this. So one of the things we want to do with data sets is we sometimes want to know how many things are in it. So the how many things is known as the concept of a length. And this also again applies to the previous arrays we already saw. So we can know the number of entries in an array. We can also know the number of entries in a data set in the exact same way, using the possessive S pulling from the English spoken language and the keyword length within Harlow. And we see that right here, as we also saw in the previous video with arrays. So if we want to know the length of a particular data set, we use the possessive S right here, single quotation and then S, a space, and then the keyword length. And in this case, it will give us the number of entries within this set of data. In this case, it's three. And if we go ahead and move the start of the story to this passage and then build, we see three, which is correct. So that is the length of that data set. Well, so far, we see we can create data sets using the DS macro, and we can get the number of entries within that. What if we wanted to do more? Well, we saw with arrays that potentially we could get random entries from the array. We can't do that with data sets. It would seem at first glance that perhaps that might be possible, but the problem is we don't know the position of the data. Because we don't know the position of the data, we can't get a random entry. So random is not part of what we use with data sets. However, what is part of data sets is sometimes we want to know, is something in that set? Again, returning to a central question we ask about this particular data structure, is something in the set or not? Well, we can use that using the keyword contains, which we also saw with arrays. We could see if something was in an array or not. We can do the exact same thing with a data set. We create a data set, a collection of unique values, and then we use the keyword contains to test if something is in that set not, and then do something with it. 
So we can create a data set, we can check its length, and we can check to see what it contains. There are two other operations we can use when we work with data sets. We can add things to a data set and we can remove things from a data set. However, data sets like arrays have their own rules. In the previous video, I talked, array, I talked about arrays in the terms of the sentence arrays affect arrays. This is also true of data sets in that data sets affect data sets. In order to add to a data set, we need to create a data set. In order to remove from a data set, we need to create a data set. So only data sets can affect data sets in the same way arrays affect arrays. So let's look at an example here in example four. If I wanted to add an entry, and again, remember this needs to be a unique value. If I wanted to add a unique value to an existing data set, I need to create a data set, and then I can follow the pattern we've already seen with other values. We can use the keyword it and add to, use the plus symbol in this case, that value. So notice I needed to create a new data set and then I can combine the two data sets together and we would see down here if the example data set contains D, and it will because we've added it right here in this line, we will see this text. So let's go ahead and start the story down here from example four, I will build, and we see it does because it does. So we can add to a data set using another data set. And the same way we can add to an array by making another array. Well, we can add to a data set and also remove from. In the case of remove from, we do it the exact same pattern we just saw for adding to. In this case, we use the subtraction or the minus or the hyphen symbol in the exact same pattern. In this case, we have to create a data set to then subtract, that is, remove from the existing data. Now remember, unlike arrays which can have repeating values, data sets will never have that because they are always unique values. So then when we move a particular value from that data set, it no longer exists in it. And once it no longer exists, the contains testing against it will no longer be true. So in this case right here, the reader will never see the text. It does this hook right here because once it is removed right here, it will no longer be contained within that data set. So finally, if we move to the last passage, start from here and build, we won't see the text because it no longer contains the A. So in this video, I've gone over how to create a data set, how to get the length of a data set, how many things are in that data set. Then we also saw that we can use the keyword contains as we also saw with arrays previously in another video. And we saw how we can add to and remove from a data set. Now the question might become, at this point, we've seen arrays and we've seen data sets. Arrays can do seemingly more things than a data set can do. Why would we ever use a data set when we could use an array? Data sets are particularly important in cases where we don't care about the order. Remember, in an array, the order is incredibly important. We access values in part by knowing their position position one, position two, whatever. If we don't care about the position at all, and we just care is this in this set or not, then data set is the preferred option to do it. So let's say in a particular scenario that a reader is navigating across a story and there are a bunch of possible keys or items they may collect. Now we know they can get any of these items, but the order in which they get them doesn't matter. We just need to know if they have them or not. In which case a data set might be the better data structure to use. Because in this particular scenario, we are just checking to see, do they have this or not? We don't care about the order. And in which case, a data set would be a better usage of that particular scenario. We could use arrays, but again, if we don't care about the order and we just care yes or no, do you have this or not, the data set is the better way to go. So this has been a video on talking about data sets, and in a following video, I will talk about data maps, and then in an additional video, we'll talk about ways to potentially choose between arrays, data sets in this video, and in the next one, data maps, and why you might want to choose one or the other. Thanks for watching.